What's up fuckers and welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K23 Next Gen. In today's video we have one of my favorite young teams in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons. So this was a team that won just 23 games last year. Now, they did have the number one overall pick the year before. They obviously used that to draft Cade Cunningham. This past year's draft they had number five. They took Jay Ivey, who I'm very, very high on right now. So I think the young core and the potential of this team is super high. But we definitely do have some moves to make because this team is nowhere near a contender right now. And finally, of course, if you guys have not yet subscribed to the channel and are new around here, we would love to have you stick around for a while. So do me a favor real quick, hit that sub button. And uh, yeah, finally, we're getting back into a couple maybe, you know, normal rebuilds right now. We just did two historic rebuilds. Of course, we're going to continue to do those, but I just wanted to do a Pistons rebuild. I don't know why I kind of had an itch to do a Pistons rebuild. Nobody really asked for it. But here we are today, man. I really want to do a rebuild with this team and I really want to get them a championship. Let's hop in. Let's quickly discuss this Detroit Pistons roster and why I think they have one of the better young cores in the entirety of the NBA. We can kind of get into it a little bit right now before we make any trades or do start simulating. So, number one, Kemba Walker came over in a trade. I think it was a three-team deal with the Knicks where he ended up landing here in Detroit. I don't really get this fit a whole ton. I feel like if you're in the Pistons spot right now, you're probably, one, not really wanting to pay somebody who maybe doesn't really want to be here. I mean, maybe it could be a good veteran mentorship, something like that, but... Uh, for me, it would probably make a lot more sense if either they bought him out or found a new home for him. But, uh, you know, I love Kemba. I really wish his time in Boston ended differently. There's probably not a huge trade market for him right now. Corey Joseph, decent backup veteran point guard here. We have Killian Hayes, who's somebody that, you know, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say bust. But, you know, he's probably not going to be here starting anytime soon. Uh, best player on this team far and away is Cade Cunningham, obviously former number one overall draft pick. I think he's 100% poised for an absolute great season and great career ahead of him. I really like this man's game, and I'm super excited to see what uh, what we do with him today. Uh, Jay Ivey, number five overall draft pick. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do because hypothetically, I really want both him and Cade to kind of play. And I think I could probably just start Cade at the point guard spot and not really have any issues, but... And we're kind of left without a backup shooting guard. So that might come into play with maybe a trade or two. Uh, we have Sadiq Bey, who I think is poised for a breakout year this year. I like Sadiq Bey a lot. I believe he actually had really good numbers last year. Yeah, he was around 16, 5.5, and, and 3. Field goal and you know three-point percentages weren't the best, but that's definitely something we can work on. We have Alec Burks here, good veteran off the bench. Hamadou Diallo, and then they signed Kevin Knox, Mr. Fortnite Jacket at the draft. Bohan Bogdanovich recently came over in a trade with the Utah Jazz. They sent Kelly Olenek and Saban Lee over there. Jazz didn't even get a draft pick. I guess they're high on Saban Lee for whatever reason. But Bohan's here is a good stretch forward to have on this team. They also have Marvin Bagley. Got a contract extension this offseason. Was obviously in the 2018 NBA draft. And uh, was taken second overall by the Sacramento Kings. I think we all know how that worked out right there. Uh, Isaiah Lever is here as well. And then the center spot's an interesting one for me. Because I like Isaiah Stewart a lot. Back in 2K22, he actually progressed really, really well. If you continue, can continue, nah, I can't fucking speak this early in the morning. Can continue to do that here in 2K23. He could be my guy the entire video. But if that progression maybe doesn't go as well as it did in 2K22, might have to look for another option. Maybe he can come off the bench. Uh, New Orleans, well, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. It's probably somebody I'm going to trade before we do start seven year one on a one-year deal. A little bit on the older side. Really just doesn't fit here too well for me, in my opinion. Uh, and then Jalen Dern, who was also a draft night trade. It is now here in Detroit, and I definitely want to maximize that potential as much as possible. So, you know the team. It's a pretty, eh, it's, it's an all right team. It's not a team that's probably going to be in the playoffs. I think I currently, in my predictions, have them slotted as like a 10 or 11 seed, something like that. But, um, you know, they should be close. Maybe 11, 12 seed, more realistic. But I'm excited to see this Pistons team this year. We are going to make some trades, though. Sometimes the first deal you find is the best. Now, I did go through all 27 trades, and this was obviously the one that I ended up going with. We're going to be acquiring DeAnthony Melton from the Philadelphia 76ers for Kemba Walker in a second-round pick. Now, DeAnthony Melton, 24 years old, kind of fits our timeline a little bit. Also on a multi-year deal, only about $8.5 bucks a year, 8.25. It's uh, It's a really good addition to come off the bench for me. So I'm still going to be starting Jaden Ivey. As I mentioned, we did have to get a new backup point guard. Um, or excuse me, backup shooting guard because I do want to start Ivy and I moved K back to the point guard spot. So um, what I'm probably going to do at this point in time is I'll probably still let Corey Joseph probably run the backup point guard spot. I'll figure out what I want to do with Killian Hayes. I mean, maybe I could get him some playing time, but you know what? Maybe I'll try to play him a little bit over Corey Joseph. I might, just strictly based off the fact that this is probably not going to be that good of a team and I might as well just go ahead and make some trades. So I'm probably going to dump some of these guys just for draft picks and 
Let's see what we can find. The Memphis Grizzlies want to give me a 2024 top three protected draft pick for Nolan's Noel. As I mentioned earlier, I want to play Jalen Duran, and I really don't think having Nerlens Noel here is going to help me do that. So he's going to go over to Memphis. We're also, who is that, Killian Tilly we're getting back? Somebody like that? Yeah, I think it is. He's never going to play for me. Um, with regards to the other trades I might have, I'm a little bit iffy at the small forward spot, specifically the backup small forward spot, because I like both these guys a lot. I think Burks is probably the better player, but I like the potential, obviously, of Diallo a little bit better. So, Sneak Bay's not going anywhere. He's somebody that definitely could be here the entire video if he progresses and continues to play well. In terms of these spots right here, we do have a team option here on Burks. I hate that it, like, auto-resets when you hit B. Hamadou Diallo is a free agent. I might honestly just pull the plug and just trade him. Honestly, I might go ahead and get these draft picks. This team's obviously not a contender this year. Might as well go ahead and try to acquire a couple draft picks. So, Hamadou Diallo is still a relatively young player. There should be teams that are interested in him. I would maybe like to get a draft pick from a team that I know is not going to be good. Like, the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's a Miami pick, though. How about if instead you give me... Hmm... This Clippers first in 2024. They may end up sucking. They want Kevin Knox. They'll go, give me Tao Malden. Honestly, fine by me. Sometimes the Clippers are still good by that point. Sometimes they're not. So that's a risk, but it wasn't a guy that was going to play for us. So Pistons fans, if you really wanted me to keep him, I'm sorry. I do apologize. But uh, at this point in time, I think it's probably time for me to move on from Corey Joseph. As I mentioned, we did just acquire Tao Malden as well. So not another back bad backup point guard option. Pretty solid option. So, Corey Joseph, it kind of comes down to you at this point. I really don't need you. Again, if this is real life, these are never moves I'm making. I think it's key for most teams, pretty much every team, to have some sort of veteran presence, whether it be somebody who's in the rotation, just a bench piece like Unanis Haslam's been doing for five years, or something like that. But I'm not really seeing any draft picks here. So, I might take somebody on a multi-year deal. I'm thinking, like, Vernon Carey Jr., honestly, he's on a multi-year deal. That's fine by me. Could be a valuable trade piece at some point in time. So, um, that's probably going to be my final trade right now. You know what? I'm pretty content with this team. Uh, actually, maybe move Mike Muscala. I do not need him. Sorry. Maybe one more trade. I, I want Jalen Duran to play. Obviously, I could just start him over him, but I'm going to see if I can get a draft pick. Come on. Somebody will give me a first-round pick. Oh, come on. All right. Well, maybe not. Um, you know, is there anybody here, like, would I maybe take, like, would I go, I, I honestly, you know, give me Davis Bertans. I'm a, it's a multi-year deal, and I think I can match it maybe with a bigger contract. I'm thinking ahead right now. I will see you guys at the, with the rotation at the start of year one. I think we all know that this team is probably not even going to make the play-in. Now, that being said, we do have a lot of talent on this team for both now and the future. I'm super excited to see how this backcourt kind of meshes together. I don't know if it's actually going to be the starting backcourt once the real NBA starts, but I'm excited to see how it works here in 2K. It's Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. Two players that I think could honestly play really well off each other. I was pretty high on Jaden Ivey. He's obviously a really explosive player. I love Cade Cunningham a lot. I'm excited to see how they end up playing together. We got Sadiq Bey here. It's Bohan Bogdanovich, obviously one of the newer members on this team in real life. And then we have Isaiah Stewart starting at that center spot. It's honestly a pretty good bench. We got DeAnthony Melton, Alec Burks, Marvin Bagley, Jalen Duran, and I am going to play Killian Hayes a little bit. You know, he was a draft pick number seven overall back in 2020. I want to give him one final opportunity to maybe see if he can kind of crack this rotation for the remainder of the video. But that is it for now. Again, probably not a playoff team. You never know. Maybe some things happen. I'll see you guys at the end of year one here in Detroit. To be honest, I was not paying attention while we were simulating. It's been a bad habit of mine. I probably should start doing that. So I have no idea how good or bad this team was. Uh, to nobody's chagrin, Luka Doncic, MVP, 37 points, 11 boards, 10 assists. Congrats. It's really impressive. Chet Holmgren, Rookie of the Year. Obviously, really won't have a case to make this year for it because he's unfortunately out, which sucks because I really... I'm so excited to watch the Thunder... Like, just that young core kind of meshed together, and then injury. It sucks, but I think Chet's going to be back better than ever. Well, I can't even say that because we've never really seen him play, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Brickleberry Simmons, sixth man, Anthony Davis, Depoy, Trey Jones most improved. Oh, that's a tough one right there. Uh, yeah, 2K. Might want to update some shit. Come on now. We're like pretty much close to a week removed now. All right, let's look at the standings. Uh, okay, I'm not seeing us. Maybe, oh boy, wow. 26 and 56. Puts us in position for the projected number three draft pick. Obviously, the top three teams or the bottom three teams, I should say, all have the same odds for number one, but that's pretty tough. You know, I thought this team would maybe be a little bit better. Um, you know, our backcourt looked good, though. I will say that. Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, both around 17 and a half, 18 points a game. 
pretty impressive. I'll take that. Bohan Bogdanovich, Sadiq Bey. Maybe expecting a little bit more from Sadiq. Whoops, that's not my team. From Sadiq Bey. It's all right, though. Um, you know, I don't think we scored a lot of points. That's that's kind of the unfortunate thing right there. I actually kind of want to look at team stats right now uh, and maybe kind of just see how many points per game we did score because I would imagine we were probably close to the bottom. Yeah, we were actually second to last. We only scored 107 points a game. It's unfortunate. How many did we allow per game? Um, were we good on defense? No, it looks like we were pretty middle of the pack. Pistons, Pistons. Yeah, we were dead middle of the pack. We let up about 115 points a game. So about a negative eight differential, which is unfortunate. So uh, we are obviously not in the playoffs right now, which is tough. I thought this team maybe would have been a little bit closer, but hopefully we're in turn and hopefully we're somewhat close to a high draft pick. Bulls and Pelicans in the finals. Interesting. Chicago goes on. What in the hell is this first season? All right. Well, congrats to the Chicago Bulls. I know you don't have a lot of championships in your history. I'm sure you Bulls fans are really struggling right now. Let's get into the offseason real quick. Uh, we will hit. I don't think we'll have any retirements that will really affect me. So, draft lottery. This is obviously a super important moment for me here. Uh, and I, th I think our pick from the, obviously, I, th I believe it was in the Jalen Duran trade, is protected. Uh, probably at least top three, I would imagine. And we're falling all the way to six. That kind of sucks. I'm not even going to lie. All right. Staff signing. Dwayne Casey, you know, I'm not a huge Dwayne Casey fan. Uh, he's won a coach of the year and then got fired. So, you know, say what you want about that. But he has pretty decent ratings, so I'll keep him for now. Um, you know, there's obviously, I hate the coaching carousel, you know, here in 2K. I think it, it, they make it way too hard to make trades and it kind of sucks, or signings of coaches, and it kind of does suck. But, um, yeah, you know, at this point in time, we uh, I want to build our team up. We have no reason to tank because we don't have our draft pick next year. The Knicks now have it, so... We need to go ahead and build this team up, whether it be in a trade or me drafting a stud, whatever it may be. Let's make some moves. For whatever reason, the Charlotte Hornets value Davis Bertans at a star and a half when he really should be negative. I hope 2K fixes that for future 2Ks, but they probably won't. Um, and we have the sixth overall draft pick. So I'd like to get number four. It would obviously give us a little bit more flexibility, a few more options if we do move up. And obviously, we're not going to have to give up a ton with a guy who wasn't even in our rotation. So they don't want to do that. How about if instead, I don't have a ton of other players under contract that I'd really be willing to give up. It's like De'Anthony Melton. Okay, they agree to that. So we now have the number of four overall pick. I was saying De'Anthony Melton someday I wouldn't want to give up. Um, so we look at the prospects. Obviously, Henderson and Banyama are typically the one-two here. Really probably not going to get either of those guys. If I'm thinking of some options here, you know, I think power forward's an option. But Number one guy here is Gregory Jackson. He's obviously a little bit lower on the board. DE rank actually does have him at number four. He, he might be my guy. I'm not even going to lie. I have drafted him in the past, and honestly, he's always been pretty solid for me. Please tell me he didn't go three. He did not. Whoa, Scoot Henderson's here. Now, this might change some things, because I, I can't just pass up Scoot Henderson, because I know how good he is. I think it would be dumb for me not to take him. I think the move, and this sucks, it really does, is honestly for me probably to start Henderson, move Cade back to the two, and then have Ivy as a sixth man. I really didn't want to do this, but Scoot Henderson fell into my lap here. And in, in my wholehearted theory, and my theory has always been this, when you're a bad team, like, like when you suck, and you know you've sucked, you've sucked for years, and you have the option to take a player that either fits your team or is the best talent available, you always take best talent available. If you're a team that's good, maybe then you go ahead and take the team or take the player that's the better fit. That's just my philosophy on it. I think when you're a rebuilding team, you can never go wrong having enough really solid talent, preferably over somebody who maybe fits the team a little bit better. So that's the route I'm going today. Uh, we're going to pick up all these team options and all these young players right here. Uh, Killian Tilly and Braxton Key. I have no idea who you even are. Not going to be getting the qualifying offer. So this kind of sucks because I am going to be moving Cade back to the shooting guard spot. And uh, I'm going to edit his position and then we're going to figure some other things out. So if I'm taking a look at this current Pistons roster, there's obviously some holes and there's obviously some spots where we have a lot of depth. Now, point guard spot is one that I'm pretty content with. I'm going to start Scoot Henderson. I probably am making the right decision, I think. Hopefully. I don't know. It sucks because Jaden Ivey played so well. Had such a solid rookie season, and here I am saying, hey man, you played so well that this is your reward. I'm going to bench your ass, and that sucks, because I really wanted to keep playing him, but Scoot Henderson fell into my lap, and I may end up making the wrong decision there, which sucks, but ultimately, I'm going to move Cade. 
uh, to the back to the shooting guard spot, and then D'Anthony Melton's probably on his way out now. So what I'm thinking right now is we're probably going to run it back with a similar core. I did not mean to do that. The only thing I'm probably going to change, I think I'm going to do a sign and trade here with Bohan Bogdanovich, and I think I'll probably include D'Anthony Melton in that, just because the way this team's currently kind of constructed right now, there's really no other big needs. I'm a little bit nervous on Sadiq Bay after that year, and maybe even a little bit on Isaiah Stewart, but... I'm still going to give them one more shot. I mean, Sneak Bay just had maybe a little bit of a down year in the points per game department, but I just don't know. Isaiah Stewart wasn't even that bad. So I, I'm going to go ahead and make a trade now. We're going to find a new power forward just because I think Bohan Bogdanovich will regress. So let's see what we can come up with. This would be a really interesting trade. And honestly, it might be one where I really don't even have to give up that many draft picks. John Collins is coming off a little bit of a down year in the points per game department, similar to Sadiq Bay. You also got to remember that they added DeJounte Murray, so it kind of makes sense. But, uh, you know, I'm going to offer Bohan and DeAnthony Melton. We just don't really need DeAnthony Melton at this point in time. I mean, maybe I can move him to, like, the backup point guard spot. Eh. I don't have a backup point guard, do I? I have ten. You know what? Let's try to keep DeAnthony Melton. How about this? You want to do that? And then there's definitely some other players I'd be willing to throw in here. Like, I'd give up Alec Burks probably instead. You want to do that? And then how about, like, you want Isaiah Levers? Beautiful. Don't even have to give up a single draft pick. D'Anthony Melton is going to get moved uh, wherever the hell he is to the backup point guard spot. He actually goes up to a 78 overall. So, at this point in time, Tail, Mullen, Killian Hayes, I'm probably just going to cut the cord and move on from. Um, I think we're also probably going to try to trade for a new backup. I can't fucking speak this early in the morning. New backup, small forward. So, let's see if Tail, Mullen, Killian Hayes can maybe get me one of those. I think Killian Hayes still having two and a half stars is absolutely criminal. Derek White. Honestly, wouldn't be a bad veteran off the bench. Ooh, or could go Jared Vanderbilt. Is he on a one-year deal, though? He is. Makes me a little bit nervous. So, uh, you know what? Actually, are those draft picks... Unless this could be an unprotected pick. If you want to do... No, no, not that. Can this be an unprotected pick in 2024? That I would do. And, actually, they didn't add anybody that... No, they're going to suck. Actually, I would definitely give... You want Vernon Carey Jr. as well? And then I will give you a first in 2027. All right, cool. That actually, I'm way happier with that because I think the Spurs will suck and it hopefully should give us another really high draft pick. And honestly, I'll just sign a different backup small forward. Oh shit, I have money? I did not realize that I had money. Apparently I have like 41 million bucks in cap. Um, all right, well, I'm not going to go out and spending it right now. I'm going to go ahead and spend it on somebody like, I don't know. Who fits the system? Like, Matisse Steibel, honestly, we don't need a ton of scoring off the bench, probably, so I'll, I'll sign him. Could be some good defense off the bench. I didn't even realize we had that much cap space. It honestly kind of makes sense with the way the roster's constructed, but that's fine by me. I'll see you guys at the start of year two. I don't really know what to think about this team. I think this team could be anywhere from, like, a four seed to just not making the playoffs. So, let's see if uh, 2K wants to treat me right, and we can come up with, uh, hopefully, a pretty good year. Obviously, I don't know if all of you are going to agree with my decision of playing Scoot Henderson over Jay Nivey. It's one that I made, and it sucks because Ivy obviously had a really good rookie year. So, if you're pissed at me for that, I'm sorry, Pistons fans. It's the way it is. Scoot Henderson, Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bay, John Collins, and Isaiah Stewart. Pretty good starting five. Bench unit's actually really good. It's Jay Nivey, Marvin Bagley, DeAnthony Melton, and Matisse Thibault. And Jalen Duren. I'm actually going to swap these two right here. Um, you know, I'm excited to see how this team can do. I'm hoping we can be in the playoffs, but we'll see. I'll see you guys at the end of the second season. I was very surprised with this team. I actually paid attention while we were simulating, and we went 55-27, and 27, which was a whole lot better than I thought we were going to be. We're probably a top three seed here in the East. Luke, another MVP. Victor Mbanyama does win Rookie of the Year. Did go number two overall. I... I <laughs> Congratulations. Nashawn Highland, six man. Joel Embiid, defensive player of the year. You don't see that one a ton. Probably should see it a little more. The Cum Bucket, most improved. Jonathan Kuminga and then JB Bickerstaff does win coach of the year. Let's take a look at the standings. See how we panned out here in the East and it gives us the number two spot. I did not think this team was deserving of a number two spot, but when 2K blesses me, typically I take it. Wow, 50 wins took the one seed for Golden State over there. Actually, also, I want to see how good were the Clippers. And they sucked, which means we should hopefully have like a top six, seven pick with them, which is not, not bad for me trading a couple role players. Uh, Kid Cunningham, Scoot Henderson, Sadiq Bay, Jaden Ivey, John Collins. So the scoring definitely looks like it evened out a little bit more, which I am happy with. And uh, let's see if this team can make a little bit of a playoff run. We skip right over the play-in, and we got the Toronto Raptors here real quick. It's Fred Van Vliet, Patrick Beverly, OG Ananobi. Scotty Barnes, Siakam. Pretty good team right here. It's uh, it's an interesting one, but it's a, it's a good team in my opinion. Uh, we actually lose, shit, we actually lose game one. Oh, I'm on the wrong fucking thing. Ignore me, I'm all over the place this fine morning. We are 2-2 right now with the Raptors. We go down 3-2, we're going to game seven, and we win. 
in seven games. Now we got the three seed Miami Heat. Emmanuel Moutier, I guess that's one way to move on from Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Darius Baisley, Bam Adebayo, Powell, Caleb Martin. The Heat are the Heat. They're always going to be in contention. They're always going to be a good team. We are 2-2 with them right now. We go up 3-2 and we close them out in six. And we have home court advantage here in the Eastern Conference Finals as the four seed Celtics upset the Cavs. Okay, four seed Celtics upset the Cavs. This Celtics team terrifies me. Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, Williams, Brogdon. Oh, you added Mitchell Robinson. And what in the hell? How do you have that much like cap space? And how are we winning? What is going on right now? This team's in the finals, and Kate Cunningham played out of his mind in the Eastern Conference Finals, wins Eastern Conference Finals MVP, and we're facing Carl Anthony Towns and the Minnesota Timberwolves here in the finals. Wow. Not the way I thought this one was going to go. I did not see this team as a playoff team. Well, I did, maybe, like, as a lower than 4C, but, like, not in the finals in year two. All right, that's a talented Timberwolves team. Can we get by them here? We are up to nothing. They to win a game three. We win game four, and we win a championship in year two. I will say this. I have had teams with way more talent not even make a finals, and this team wins a championship in year two? You know what? I guess the pressure's off me, but man, oh, man, is that a little bit of a surprise. Um, I forgot. We also have that Spurs pick, don't we? Yes, we do. So we're projected three and six right now. Uh, we end up with number one. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to do with the number one overall pick. I really don't. Uh, Dwayne Casey's obviously, I mentioned earlier, I'm not the biggest Dwayne Casey fan, but, you know, we just won a championship, so I'm not going to move on from him. And now we have the number one and number seven overall picks. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. I'll try to find something. We're going to try to get DeAndre Ayton here for the number one overall draft pick. Now, obviously, DeAndre Ayton, former number one overall draft pick, I don't like leaving teams the same way for multiple years. And I think if we're going to get an upgrade at any spot, it's probably going to be our center position. So why not? I don't need the number one overall pick. I probably don't need Marvin Bagley either. So welcome to the team, DeAndre Ayton. He's obviously an upgrade over Isaiah Stewart, who is a free agent. So is Jay. Actually, Jalen Nuren definitely has a team option. Um, I don't know what I want to do with the number seven overall pick. Maybe I draft a new backup small four. Like, I, I just honestly have no idea. I don't really need anything. Um... Mookie Cook. You remind me of Mookie Betts, who was one of my favorite Red Sox players of all time before stupid fucking front office went ahead and traded him. Sorry, I'm not getting into it right now. It just pisses me off. Welcome to the team. Uh, potentially could be our new backup small forward, 77 overall Mookie Cook. Welcome to Detroit. Cunningham, Ivy, and Duran all going to be coming back. We have qualifying offers on Sadiq Bay and Isaiah Stewart. Maybe I'll try to up get an upgrade for Sadiq Bay. I just, I don't really know what else to do at this point in time. Uh, we definitely don't have any cap space now that we took on, like, I oh, have 14 million bucks, but that's going to go pretty quickly. Um, I'd like to get DeAnthony Melton back. He was obviously a pretty good rotation piece. And then I'll wait on Stewart and I'll wait on Bay. I'm definitely not going to be renouncing Stewart and Bay. God, this dumbass fucking video game. I don't get it. Why would I auto, like, renounce these two? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I maybe you can make the case that, like, why would you not give them an offer on, like, day one of free agency? But, like... I would if your stupid game wasn't broken and didn't require me to go ahead and do this so they don't get their qualifying offers. Sadiq Bay, sign the goddamn contract. You're getting $123 million. All right, we have this team basically figured out. We obviously got an upgrade at our center spot. I think the only thing maybe left for us to do, maybe I get an upgrade at the starting small forward spot, but like Sadiq Bay has been playing well. I just don't know. I mean, I don't know at this point. Let's see if we can find a trade. If not, I'll see you guys with maybe a smaller trade for a backup power forward. I think it'd be fun to get R.J. Barrett on this team. You know, he absolutely balled out last year in Orlando. He's now a member of the L.A. Clippers. So, 24, you know, 6 and 4. It's fine by me. Um, I have some pieces I'd probably be willing to trade. Like, can you even afford Mitzi Stiebel? You can have him if you want. I have Mookie Cook. Uh, and then, honestly, you can have Jalen Duren. I don't really need him. I have Isaiah Stewart backing up DeAndre Ayton. So, do you want Jalen Duren? Welcome to the team, R.J. Barrett. I just had too many pieces, and honestly, I didn't need all of them. So let's go ahead and sign it back up for maybe like Kyle Anderson. That's absolutely fine by me. This is a pretty good team. I'll see you guys at the start of the third and final year. We won a championship last year, and it was a championship that I really didn't think that we had the capability or the talent to win. But we did, and this team only got better, in my opinion. And I'm super excited to hopefully run it back. It's Scoot Anderson, Cade Cunningham, R.J. Barrett, John Collins, and DeAndre Aiden. Obviously not a typical starting five for what you would expect here in Detroit, but I'm excited to see what happens. Jay Nivey, 22 minutes a night, going to be our sixth man, followed by Isaiah Stewart, Mookie Cook, DeAnthony Melton, and Kyle Anderson. Let's see if this team can go back to back. 
I'll see y'all at the end of year three. I'm considering writing a letter to 2K about how overpowered they consider Luka Doncic to be. Just give somebody else the fucking MVP award. Like, honestly, I'm going to override it. I'm going to give it to somebody else. John Morant, congratulations. It's just annoying. I shouldn't have to do that. DJ Widener, Rookie of the Year. Isaiah Jackson, sixth man. Evan Mobley, deep point. Jalen Dern does win most improved. This actually happens a lot when you trade a you know, roll piece to a different team and he gets more minutes. Actually, really, really solid season. Uh, and Dwayne Casey wins Coach of the Year. We go 64-18, and 18, and I'm very, very content and very, very happy with that record. Hopefully leading us to a second championship. We were six games out of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the best record in the NBA by far. Let's take a look at the numbers and see how we did it. We were led in points... Well, Excuse me. Led in points by Cade Cunningham, followed by R.J. Barrett, Scoot Henderson, Aiden, Ivy Collins. I mean, this team just has so much immeasurable talent on it that I'm hoping we win a championship rather easily. Indiana here in round one. Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict Matherin, Chris Duarte, Terry Taylor. Tingus Pingus, you added to your squad. They're a pretty good team. I'm pretty confident we can beat them rather easily. We win in five. Orlando here in round two. I definitely wouldn't want to do a magic rebuild. Did I do a magic rebuild? I don't think I did. I forget if I did or not, but that team looks deep. That team looks like it has a lot of talent. Um, I forget. Did I do an Orlando Magic rebuild? I don't know if I did or not, but if you want to see a Magic rebuild, let me know. I guess we'll figure it out together. Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Cody Martin, Mobley, and Allen. It's obviously the one, two, four, five punch you got here going on in Cleveland. Their bench is all right. It looks like it's 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 all right. I'll give you that. I would say we're probably the deeper team, which means we're the better team, and we sweep them as well. Anthony Edwards wins the Western Conference Finals MVP, Cade Cunningham Eastern Conference. So we've only lost one playoff game so far. Let's take a look at this Timberwolves team. Obviously, we played them last year. they got our old friend Killian Hayes here. He's been playing pretty well for them. Um, I'm not going to lie. I actually tried to trade for Carl Anthony Towns before. I tried to trade for DeAndre Ayton. I gave an unbelievable trade package for Cat. They just weren't having it. So can we get by them here? in the NBA Finals for the second straight year, and it looks like we do it with ease. This team was obviously immeasurably talented, and I did not think two championships would happen. I would have, I was kind of hoping we would win one by the end of year three. I did not think we'd win one in year two and then win a second straight one. But it happened, and I had fun with this one. I, I think this was a really fun team. The Pistons obviously have a really bright future. Now, these players obviously won't be on it, the majority of them, but nonetheless, still a fun team. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, you can leave a like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Of course, if you guys are new around here, can do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. That would be absolutely awesome. We'd love to have you. Other than that, that wraps this one up. Let me know any other current or historic rebuilds you want to see down below in the comments section. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.